Hi, this is Mrs. Richmond again, and this is the video for the Cell Respiration Lab. In case you are absent, this video should help you complete the lab. Before we did the Cellular Respiration Lab, we did a warm-up on notebook number six, block number one, with a clothespin, a workout. And what we did was we saw how many times you could open and close a clothespin, and I timed you for one minute. You jotted down how many times you were able to do that, and then we did it for a second minute. By the end of the second minute, most students' fingers were burning quite badly, and we talked about when your muscles run out of oxygen, that's when you get that burning sensation. We go from aerobic to anaerobic ability to process energy in our muscles. So watch a short little video of students um, doing this activity and see what you think. Keep going. Anybody's fingers burning yet? There. Keep going. Open and close them. Five more seconds. All right, good. Stop. How many times are you able to open and close it? 122. Kind of jot that down and pick your clothes pin back up. You're going to go for another minute. Ready? Nope. Same hand. Ready? Pick it back up. Everybody got the first number? Yeah. Alright, you're going to do it another minute and you're going to recount. Ready, set, go. So start your counting over again. <laughs> you lost count. Uh-oh, he can't count that high. His fingers are burning too bad. He can't concentrate. Anybody's fingers burning now? Mine. <laughs> How many are you up to, Angel? 120 already? Oh, okay. The first thing that you need to do is put your name on the lab and after that you should read through the background information and in the background information you will learn um, what cellular respiration is, where it takes place, and um, what is given out during cellular respiration. If you skip down to paragraph 3 it says that you were told that if you could memorize the equation for photosynthesis the equation for cell respiration was very easy to remember. Please write the formula for cell respiration in the space between the third and fourth paragraph. You can write it in words or in chemical formula. And I gave you a hint on the sheet here. To get cell respiration formula you take the formula for photosynthesis and flip it. And then you also change sunlight to ATP. So your cell respiration formula should read C6H12O6 plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O plus ATP. Please write that in the blank. Okay, next, the last paragraph talks about the pH indicator solution, and we're going to be using that today to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. Uh, to be testing for presence of carbon dioxide, what we're going to do is blow into a beaker that has some of this pH indicator solution in it. Okay, the problem that we're going to test today is, is, is there a relationship between exercise and the amount of CO2 or carbon dioxide produced by an organism that uses cellular respiration? First thing I'd like you to do is write a hypothesis. If an organism exercises, then its cellular respiration level will. Please fill in the blank with what you think will happen once an organism exercises. Does cellular respiration increase, decrease, stay the same, have no change? Uh, what is it that you think happens? The materials needed for this lab are one small beaker, some pH indicator solution, a straw, a stopwatch, a graduated cylinder, paper towels, and an aquarium aerator. For part one, what you're going to do is get a beaker with the solution from me. First, we're going to note and record the color of the solution in the beaker. If you'll flip to the back of your sheet, you'll see a data chart, and the first box asks you what the color of the liquid is. Please stop and fill that in now. Okay, after you've recorded the color of the solution, it asks you to place a straw in the beaker and gently blow into the solution. When you start blowing into the straw, your partner should start timing you. Stop timing once the solution changes color and then record the time it took for the solution to change color in the data chart. Now here's a short video of the students actually doing part one of the experiment. Keep 
keep your hand over the beaker so it doesn't splatter all over. When you think that it's turned all the way that it can turn, it's going to be turning a light yellow color. When it turns light yellow, you can stop. Okay, good, Amber. Let go. Yours should look like this. It's a nice light yellow color. If you still see like a greenish tint to it, keep going. It should be nice and light yellow. Should you keep going? No, yours is good. That's good. All right, when you're done, write down the time that you, that it took you. Tubing in the liquid until the solution turns back to its original color. Um, it turned yellow because we added CO2 or carbon dioxide to it, and now we need it to turn back to dark green, so we're going to add oxygen to it. Uh, watch the short video clips of students actually performing this in the lab. So now you're going to turn them back green. Make sure your hand's over your beaker. It'll take a couple seconds for it to turn back green. Maya, can you tell me what we're adding to it to turn it back green? Oxygen. Can you say a little louder? Oxygen. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> So once we've added enough oxygen, it should go back to the normal color green. You want it back to the original color green. No, you don't need to time it right now. Just turning it back green. It doesn't do anything. It's just a green sticker. Once it turns back Okay, next you're going to predict how long it would take the solution to change color if you conduct the test after you exercise. And remember that the time it took to turn without exercise was 1 minute, 17 seconds, and 70 milliseconds. So now you're going to do some light exercising and I want you to predict a time that you think it'll take to turn the color this time. Um, please write that on the blank under step 2. For step 3 you're going to choose some kind of exercise that will increase your heart rate. Um, be careful not to overexert yourself because you're going to have to come back and blow into the beaker again. Step four, after you exercise, you're going to blow gently into the solution. When you start blowing, then your partner should start timing. And you stop timing once the solution changes color again. Please record for step five the time that it took for the solution to change color in the data chart. Please do that now. Part two, you got to increase your heart rate somehow. So these students are running to increase their heart rate. And then they're going to do the same part of the experiment again. <laughs> Remember, don't overexert yourself. You don't want to be too out of breath. Call Fred and Derek on back. They're good. Fred's on his way. Okay. John's doing sit-ups now to increase his heart rate. Maya's out of breath. <laughs> All over. When you think that it's turned all the way that it can turn, it's going to be turning a light yellow color. When it turns light yellow, you can stop. Okay, good, Amber. Let go. And here's data for part two. It says 33 seconds and 25 milliseconds, so 33.25. This went much faster than before exercising. All right, now you have four conclusion questions to answer, and it says be sure to answer these questions in complete sentences. Question number one says, how did exercising affect the amount of time it took for the solution to change color? Question two, what was your prediction in step two based on? Was your prediction accurate? This is the prediction that you wrote down for step two, part two on the line in parentheses, how long you thought it would take after you exercised. Number three, in part two, what variables did you need to control, and how did you control these variables? Um, we needed to control how much you exercised and the way that we controlled that was we said that the students could only exercise for a few minutes um, that way their breathing was under control. Last question number four, some plants grow in water. How are you to design an experiment that would test whether these plants produce carbon dioxide during photosynthesis? Think about how could you use this pH indicator solution that we used in today's lab to see if these plants give out carbon dioxide or oxygen during photosynthesis. What color would the water turn if you were using this indicator solution? That should complete the lab. Please make sure your name is on it and turn it in. Thank you.